All right, we are live for the final Otter Talk of the season. I am Trax, and joining me this evening is the Bully and Fury. How's everyone doing tonight? Doing all right, just getting rained on at work and hoping my uh, power doesn't go out over here. Oh, fun. Doing perfectly fine, you know, looking for places to live, uh, <laughs> you know, uh... So I don't get shot in Chicago. Oh, oh, Trax, I don't tell you. I'm moving to Chicago. <laughs> oh, Chicago, police, fun. Police gonna be running you, be wait, you from the street. No, to you're Chicago. not moving there anymore. Mm -mm. I you was. Were there at one point. Yeah, yeah, outside yeah. Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you know what they say? Stay for the food, or come for the food. Stay because you got murdered. Well, I don't know. I was, <laughs> I was looking at like the crime rates all around. Yeah. Like, which place? Which place can I walk without like you know risking my life? Good uh, luck. And it's like. <laughs> On the scale of like, um, you know, very light colored blue, or it actually mm -hmm. went all the way to white and all the way to dark blue. And I, when I was looking at it, I was like, oh my god, everything is like dark blue. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna oh. die here. Yeah. Tracks like something like an Anthony Jeselnik joke for some reason. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. I just saw like a picture of it a while ago. One of my friends on it's Facebook shared it years it ago, and it, it stuck with me. Yeah. The food there <laughs> is great, though. You know, Portillo's so good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Let's see how. We'll how many places I could try out until we like... got portillos yeah. in Florida. We're good. Yeah, yeah. Pizza's good too. But without further ado, it's time to talk about the two teams that we're gonna see on stream in about twenty five minutes. The first team after competing through the seven weeks took down absolute esports Rio, the number five seed, took down Dragon Claw Cloud and what was an amazing five game series it's the number one ranked cb ruby up against the number two seed cb rush who took down the number three seed ta specter in five games and the number one seeded lancer esports in four games so number one number two matching up tonight and what should be a phenomenal best of five series. You guys excited? Yeah, Very it's going to be a good one. It's going to be great. Looking forward to it. Let's hop into Otter Talk. This is going to be different. Obviously, we're not here doing power rankings. We're not here doing multiple match predictions. We're here to talk about the individual players that make up these teams. So with that, let's talk about CB Rush and CB Ruby. Starting for roster for CB Rush, Noble Attempt in the top lane, Cade in the jungle, Rutledge in the mid lane, Percy ADC, and Kanina support. On the other side, number two, or number one, my apologies, CB Ruby in the top lane, it's Martial Arts Ori. Enchanter 1 in the jungle, Kuma mid lane, no attack, ADC, and Caddy support. How are we feeling about both these teams heading into finals? We're not going to do predictions quite yet, but, you know, both teams have, have kind of had their ups and downs throughout the regular season, and both teams look prepared and like they've ramped up in playoffs for this final match. Both teams have proven that they can go the distance, and they've also shown that they can close out their games pretty quickly. Well, Dave. I think a big thing we have to talk about is, uh, you know, these teams it came a long way to get these like mm -hmm. starting five players. Uh, both the Ruby and Rush started with a completely different five. I think mm -hmm. Rush actually swapped out, uh, where was it? Probably around the fourth or fifth week probably pretty late in the season so we didn't know how they were going to do um in the yeah you know, going deep in the playoffs but they did uh get some pretty solid players they got uh you know noble attempt is back in the top lane not off rolling every week mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. basically being that super sub actually playing top lane uh one of their best role um Rutledge is was pretty much gone for their first few weeks so we saw a lot of uh, you know ups and downs from them 
Uh, so it's more of a solidified roster. They're looking much better. Yes, it took him five games to beat TA Spectre and then four games to beat Lancer Esports, but I feel like they are getting better um, as they uh, keep moving on. And this is not the roster that played against Ruby. That took him to three games um, early in the season. This is a completely different roster, and uh, I would have to say it's probably a, an upgrade roster. All right. All right. How about you, Fury, heading into kind of before we talk about the lane breakdown and then your overall matchup, how are you feeling both these teams coming into this final best of five for the season? So the issue for me with Rush is like, yes, they're getting an upgraded roster, but they have had no time to play together. Uh, Ruby has been consistent with their roster the entire well, it's been, season. It's been, it's been like five, five weeks. Yeah, I mean, CB Rush have been together... I don't think anyone's really changed. There's been a couple switch-ups here and there. Oh, on Ruby? Ruby or... Yeah, on oh, Ruby. Yeah. Ruby's just been you know, the same team the entire time. I think there was a couple subs um, yeah, it was just, for a couple yeah, of weeks. That was really it. It was just at the beginning of the season where they had, like, you know, they had, uh, you know, jungler issues. They didn't. They had, like, Blue Shift. Uh, they had Usain. Usain, they had, Sugar Dad. Yeah, uh, now they got Enchanter. Um, like, they had the bay, uh, the bottom side of the map, the mid bot and support have been pretty much the same. But mm-hmm. it's that top jungle that got heavily upgraded throughout the season. Like, in the middle of the season where that's where they start getting their power spikes. And then, like, they're able to play off those two players now because, you know, no attack. And uh, it's more of, like, a utility ADC. And Kuma is, you know, he's, he's just <laughs> there, honestly. Kuma's Kuma. <laughs> Kuma's just there. All right, fair enough. We kind of talked about how we feel these teams are coming into this best of five. Now let's talk about the individual matchups and let's start it off with the top lane. Again, we don't get to see full season stats for some of these, so some of these could be a little skewed. But up in the top lane, it is Noble Attempt up against Martial Arts Quarry. And kind of just looking at it, while there seems to be a little bit of a kill participation lead for Noble Attempt, the damage here leans significantly for martial arts there. Mm-hmm. Theory, looking at these two top laners heading into tonight, do you feel is the better 1v1 laner? Like, discounting jungle presence, right? Mm-hmm. Who's better in the 1v1 here? It's easily martial arts, um, mainly because they actually play champions that want to go for that 1v1 mm-hmm. uh noble attempt plays a lot of very team-based champions uh he's gonna pick stuff like set he's gonna pick stuff like orn uh shen um you know, like volley bear who's decent in a 1v1 skirmish obviously but you know i don't think the last time he played volley bear it went so well for him um but i would definitely say martial arts plays just heavier bruiser actually i want to fight you champion yeah, all right, fair enough. Bully, what are your thoughts then on this 1v1 matchup between these two top laners as well? I mean, yeah, I, if the Orn gets picked, I wouldn't be surprised if like the Aatrox gets picked or Fiora gets picked against it. Um, it's It's more of... This lane needs to be in a state where Noble Attempt can just uh, farm up, uh, you know, if he's playing the Orn or if he's playing something else, where he doesn't die. He could just, like, stay safe. And if he has to give up, uh, you know, a wave of, or two CS, um, he just needs to do so. He can't let Martial Arts for Y actually scale up on one of these uh, hard split pushers or, you know, champions like Aatrox, Fiora, or it's just going to get much more difficult for the rest of the map. Yeah, all right, fair enough. Now, let's kind of talk about the jungler. And with that, we are going to kind of start breaking out into the 2v2 matchups with that jungle presence. So while you might feel that, let's say, one of the midlanders is better than the other midlander, we'll also talk about what can these midlanders do with the presence of their jungler. So it is the jungler. So Cade starting for CB Rush up against Enchanter 1. And two quadras, actually. Been a pretty solid season for Enchanter 1 on CB Ruby lineup, but kind of looking at the damage here, it is kind of clear that these junglers do have slightly different styles here. So, Bully, I'm going to let you lead this one off. What style do you feel kind of fits this best of five? Do you think it's going to be Cade kind of playing these kind of tanky junglers, trying to 
get these ganks off, or do you think it's going to be a little bit of a scaling advantage potentially for Enchanter here? Oh. Both these teams play, like, I've, in my opinion, a completely different style. You pointed out, like, how Enchanter won. He's been playing since, like, week three. And we've seen a mm -hmm. lot of, like, uh, you know, carry junglers. We see, you know, the Viego. We see the Graves. Um, his Lee Sin is insane. Um, so it's, it's like, uh, they want to get fed. And a lot of the team around Enchanter wants, wants to help Enchanter once gets fed. That's what we see some, you know, a lot of picks like the ash bot the seraphine bot the ziggs the lux just to try to enable um the carry potential from this jungler and that's why we also see a lot of uh, carry tops from ruby as well but uh kate plays you know driver nocturne trying to get everyone else fed uh and that's what they want to play but they want to play with the rutledge they want to play with percy they'd like to have these this bot lane centric uh team comps where Top lane is going to be more of something that just tries to scale up like the Orin or, you know, could stay in the lane by themselves like the Gragas or Set. Mm -hmm. So it's more of who, which place that uh, each team wants to play. Ruby wants to play more top side, and then you see uh, Rush wants to play more bot side. And it's going to be come down to which jungler can actually be more effective. Yeah, and it's great that you bring that up. Now, mentioning Enchanter is kind of one of those power farm carry style junglers. My question to you, Fury, is do you see a world in which CB Rush kind of, like you mentioned, uh, sacks the top side a little bit and then focuses on these kind of invades and shutting down Enchanter 1 in this early game to kind of prevent them from getting the late game carry kind of potential that they have? I think Cade needs to sit top mid. I don't think there's a reason to ever really go bot. I think the bots can hold their own. Um, you know, they don't really need mm -hmm. too much pressure from either side. Just let them do whatever they're doing. Mid Enchanter 1. Um, really... What was I going to say on that? Okay. Enchanter 1 mm -hmm. needs to get on mid mainly because on the other side, uh, Rutledge, he plays very kind of quickly scaling champions, whereas Kuma is going to be playing later scaling champions. Uh, Cade, I think, should focus the attack there as well. That's why I'm saying that in uh, Enchanter 1 should sit around the top mid because it's just going to be a battle of the junglers with the top and mid. Whoever can get ahead quicker, uh, faster. Because if Rutledge is able to get ahead quicker, then Kuma's going to have a massively hard time later on in the game. Uh, again, because they play things like Corky, Vigar, Lux, uh, yeah. it, it's going to be hard to get back into the game in, in, until, you know, 30-something minutes if you're getting pushed far back by the enemy jungler. Well, yeah, but he's also playing things with a lot of range, right? So Lucian sure. as well. I, just trying to make sure that it's not a, you know, if maybe he pulls out the Karma mid or the Soraka mid this series. Mm -hmm. But I think it's going to mostly depend on which jungler has priority in the bot side. Bot side, I'm going to think it's going to, if no attack and KD, or Caddy, or how you say it, uh, play, uh, I guess, how they usually play with, you know, pulling out the Ash, the Ziggs, sometimes going with Misfortune, sometimes Seraphine. Um, it's going to be more of towards, I guess, K to try to get this bot lane ahead. This bot lane is a big carry threat for the team. And we, we saw this last week where Ruby did go down quite a bit um, in some of these games, and they, they won at five. But mm -hmm. they, some of those games, they looked like they were all over the place. And we saw a lot of uh, interesting picks. We saw the Orange Jungle in one of these uh, one of the games, in game five, I believe, last weekend. It actually did well. Um, maybe they take that away. Um, they flex it. Who knows? All right. All right, yeah, yeah, fair. So we mentioned kind of the differences between the junglers, how they want to attack the map and their enemy team. We stated that we believe that right now in the top lane, CB Ruby has the advantage. Theory, who has the advantage in the jungle here? In the jungle, it really depends on what they're going to play. Um, if we're talking just power gankers, I would say Kate. If we're talking a champion that can sit in the jungle for a bit and then come out and one-shot mm -hmm. people, uh, it's going to be Enchanter. Okay. How about you, Bully? Well, I, I still think it's Enchanter. I think Enchanter okay. is just a better jungler at this point. I mean, that's the true. Only, the only thing is it's 
it's up to Rush to not overextend themselves because where Enchanter is taking advantage of the like the whole side of the map is he's able to play off one side. He keeps mm -hmm. on making hovering the ganks and making sure that he's there every time one of his uh, opponents is overextended and he just picks these kills up. It's more of, you know, needing to play with vision, making sure they know and track where Enchanter is. And uh, if by a chance, like Cade, you know, pulls out the Nocturne, they might just get the upper hand in these gank situations. And it's up to the whole team just to communicate where these yeah. people are on the map. Yeah, all right, fair enough. And let's talk about the next matchup then. It's the mid lane. Rutledge up against Kuma. And both kind of similar in gold chair, but there definitely tends to be an advantage or the stats leading in favor of Rutledge in terms of damage share significantly and significantly in kill participation. So my question to you, Bully, is... Mm -hmm. Who is the better mid laner in the 1v1, and then who has the better 2v2 matchup here? Uh, the better one, uh, mid laner is, I'm going to say, is Rutledge, just because of the experience he has playing. Um, mm -hmm. And we've seen him done well, not only by, you know, being on winning teams, but also be, being, like, the voice of, you know, shot calling. Uh, we see him play these champions, like, I, I've, I think he's yet to die on Lux. So it's like one mm -hmm. of the pocket picks that he just actually does super well in uh, with. So I think just overall, just laning state, I think it's Rutledge. Uh, it does okay. uh, create an issue when it's a 2v2 because that is where, you know, Kuma and Enchanter might have a, a lot of damage on that 2v2. Yeah. So if it does get picked with a Lee Sin, Lee Sin and Lucian, that's going to be pretty much insta kill. It, so I think the 1v1 does go over the Rutledge. I think the 2v2 is going to be how it's played. If it's a counter gank by Enchanter, I think Enchanter and Kuma will take the victory. Okay, sounds good. And then kind of the same question to you, Fury. What team do you feel has the advantage in the 1v1 solo lanes? And then what are your thoughts on this 2v2 matchup between these two teams? Uh, so, yeah, in the 1v1 overall, just based on what they typically pick, I would say I would give it over to Rutledge. Realistically, you can't uh, look too much into the uh, the stats that we're looking at right now, just because Kuma's yeah, of course. Be a little yeah, bit yeah. because he's been playing since uh, week one. Mm -hmm. But I will say that Rutledge has been a little bit more consistent in his play style versus Kuma, uh, where where he's kind of iffy. He's either popping off or doing so so. Uh, but in the two v two, I would easily give that over to Ruby. Okay. All right. So definitely kind of leaning Ruby topside, it seems, so far. Let's talk about the next matchup. Let's talk about the ADCs here. It's Percy up against No Attack. And kind of looking at the stats, they're pretty similar. Uh, aside from that kind of damage share uh, that these two have. Granted, you know, game is a little bit different, but. Looking at just at the ADCs, then of course we'll talk about the two v two line when we add the supports in Fury, CB Rush, CB Ruby. Who do you feel has the better marksman in the bot lane? The problem with that is that um, none of these guys really play too many marksmen. I think Percy plays more of them, mm -hmm. uh, but no attack is is been on like an AP. Yeah, uh, of course. Rush yeah, lately with the Ziggs so and the obviously, bot yeah, lane, obviously the, the stats are gonna be a little different um, when. You're playing those AP, like Karma, Seraphine, Bot. Like, your damage isn't going to be the same as yeah. you would, you know, like a Jinx. Uh, but yeah, no, that's... That's been my issue yeah. with, like, both of these teams. Like, looking at them, I can talk all day about top jungle mid, but none mm -hmm. of these teams really excel in the bot lane. Uh, I would probably say, in regards to just the 2v2, CB Rush are going to have a slight advantage okay. um, over Ruby. Uh, but later on in the game... You know, that, that's going to be decided. If if they are ahead, then great. The problem is if they're, like we're kind of predicting, if they're top jungle and mid uh, get behind, that bot lane might just be useless later on. Yeah, all right, fair enough. How about you, Bully? Kind of same question. Looking between the two ADCs, and then we'll talk about the 2v2 in just a second here. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, the bot lane of the Ruby hasn't been that uh, exciting 
I would say for you know last few series. Um, big thing is Zaya did get nerfed as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Lethality Zaya and No Tech did love that champion. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. I think Rush has the more aggressive style bot lane. They do like to pick the. They like to pick Twitch, Tristana, Vayne, Jin, things like that. Or no, yeah, things like that. Yasuo, Twitch, uh, and looks like. Uh, not really anything else. So, Tristana, those hyper carry champions that can heavily excel a team, uh, a late game team comp with the Leona Nautilus. So, a lot of high damage potential early on, a lot of kill threat. Uh, and then we're going to, they're probably going to face like a Ziggs Ash or a, with a Rel Karma. So, a very safe lane, more mm -hmm. of like kind of like utility picks on the Ruby side with more hyper carry focused champions on Russia's side. I think the bot lane presence will be a lot higher for rush but like uh fury said it's gonna be what happens at the top side of the map yeah sounds good and of course we kind of talked about the bot lane i want to talk about the support because you can't have one without the other eb rush cb ruby fury who's got the better support i, I don't even know i think is it kanaina is that how you pronounce it i don't i don't it's know if it's kanaina, kanaina. Is it Kanina? Kanina, Kanina, whatever. Yeah, Kanina. Whatever Kanina. that is. Kanina. I'm going to say Can. Uh, definitely Can. Um, on CB Rush's side, just purely based off stats alone. Uh, okay. Ridiculously good as a support. Uh, very effective. Yeah. Um, extremely accurate when going for hooks um, and just any kind of CC in general. Yeah, for I think sure. It I think that's because they, the kind of, like I said before, the kind of champions they pick, so very mm -hmm. high kill potential champions in the bot lane, where you're not going to go for a lot of all ins with the Ziggs or like even the Ash sometimes because of, uh, unless you have like the Enchanted Crystal Arrow and you have a lot of like damage to back it up with the jungler coming bot. So I think it's more in terms of the amount of KP that the bot lane gets for a rush uh, might sway it towards. Uh, can but i think that a lot of the team fight presence from support and bot come from actual team fights not the actual laning phase for ruby okay so the only problem is if like i said the top and jungle and mid fall behind then it's going to be up to the bot lane to pick up the slack and if that goes south then we might have another situation it was like game four of last week where it was a complete stomp for dragon claw and i think Overall, as a team, playing towards that win condition, it can be very, uh, ex uh, it can be, can be exposed very, very easily. Okay, yeah. So, follow up question to you. You mentioned that CB Ruby tends to be better in the later, mid to later game team fights than they are in the landing phase. Would you put the CB Ruby bot lane over CB Rush in these team fights? Or are you just saying that that they are better than their earlier landing phases? I think uh, the Ruby bot lanes play heavily off of everyone else on the team okay. while the rush bot side can play very well as like the 2v2 alright and you both have given rush the slight advantage in this 2v2 I just want to confirm with Fury mm -hmm. right? yeah Okay. Sure. perfect alright so we've kind of talked about it and going back and looking at the lineup it seems that both of you have kind of agreed that CB Ruby tends to have the advantage up in the top side off the back of Enchanter 1, but CB Rush has the slight advantage in the bot side. With all of that, we've kind of gone down these matchups, but we have to throw it to a quick break in just a second. Fury, CB Ruby, CB Rush, obviously CB's going to win. Congratulations to the org tonight. Who takes home the championship in this best of five, and what is the final score? I got Ruby and four, so three one. All right. Same question to you, Bully CB Rush, CB Ruby. Who wins it, and what is your final score? I got Russian five. Russian. F All right. So it's split. Five. So Ruby four, Russian five. We're gonna throw it to a quick break. It's gonna and be a three zero. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So we're going to throw it to a quick break. And when we are back, it's CB Ruby, the number one seed, taking on the number two seed, CB Rush, in a best of five for the Season 7 Platinum Championship. We'll be right back. <laughs> 